As I said, churn of bounds are uh, usually better in limiting tail probabilities rather than the probabilities uh, for exceeding a value which is uh, closer to the mean. Rather than that, you would like to use churn of bounds for limiting uh, tail probabilities where, where you're farther away from the mean. For instance, here, let's look at a random variable x, which is an exponential random variable with, uh, with the rate parameter of lambda. So if you remember, the expected value of this is 1 over lambda. Okay, so here we will look at the probability of x exceeding k over lambda. So this is, you see, k times the mean value. Okay, so we expect the churn of bound to be to get better as uh, k gets larger. Okay, going farther away from the mean. So we will first look at the Markov inequality. Okay, how good how good a bound can we get from Markov inequality? So probability of x exceeding k over lambda. Uh, well, x is a non-negative random variable; it's exponential, and k over lambda, uh, assuming k is positive is a positive value. So this is upper bounded by using Markov inequality, expected value of x divided by this value here, which is one over k, because this is one over lambda, divided by k over lambda, you get one over k. Okay, not bad. So it, it gets smaller and smaller with k. So going towards the tail, you get a diminishing bound, which is good. So the farther you go from the mean value, uh, okay, towards positive infinity, you get a tighter bound as expected. Let's look at Chebyshev inequality. Now, again, here, with similar to the earlier example, I do not have a form which, which is readily available for uh, using uh, Chebyshev inequality. But I employ the same tactic here. What I do is, instead of this, I just write probability of x minus 1 over lambda, which is the mean, right, exceeding k minus one over lambda. And I add to this, x minus one over lambda less than or equal to minus k minus one over lambda, okay? And here I'm assuming k is large enough so that uh, it's large enough so that this event never occurs, okay? K is, well, at least uh, greater than one so that, um, this, uh, the probability of this event is zero. But then when I write it in this way, this event equals this. So now I can write this as the probability that absolute value of x minus one over lambda exceeds k minus one over lambda, okay? So I can just apply Chebyshev inequality to, the, to this expression and I get the variance of x divided by um, the square of this k minus one over lambda squared, okay? And I know the variance, if you remember, variance of x as one over lambda squared. So that is one over lambda squared divided by k minus one over lambda squared. So I get one over k minus one squared, okay? For sufficiently large k, that will make this event impossible. And in, in this example, uh, uh, I think two is sufficient. Okay, so here, this is even better because you see this uh, gets smaller linearly, one over k, uh, well, inversely proportional to k, but you see this gets smaller inversely proportional to k square, which is much better than what is provided by Markov inequality. The question is using the churn of bound, can I do better? Let's see. 